<laughs> uh, we're going to wait a few minutes to start. We're just going to wait till everyone Welcome. gets here. Yep, that might be, you know, in a couple more minutes. Welcome. Hello, everyone. We're going to be waiting a couple more minutes to start. We're just going to wait for people to arrive. Catherine, my name is Patricia McCormick. Oh, Christina, excuse me. And I'm from Frank Baker's office. My in the chat. I'm not just here to listen. I'm here to say anything we can do to help. Oh, okay. Sorry, your your um, sound was a little muffled when you started, so I missed a little bit of that. I'm Patricia McCormick. Okay. Frank, Frank Baker's office. Oh, fantastic. I'm, I'm here not just to listen, but I'll put my info in the chat. Anything we can do to help. Um, oh, you. fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So we are arriving. Um, we're going to wait a couple more minutes. <laughs> And if folks could mute, I mean, you know, dogs are fine, I guess. Um, <laughs> but once we get started, if folks could mute, that would be great. Welcome. Hi, everybody. We're just going to wait a couple minutes for folks to. Uh clear out the waiting room here. Hey everyone, I just wanna introduce myself. I'm Denise DeSantos. I'm the point of contact from the mayor's office. Oh. I just wanted to let you guys know that I am in here. I did see the petition from Humphrey Street Studio. I've actually went in there for you guys' um, art thing you guys just had over there. My cousin, oh, okay. Mike. My cousin Big Mike has his um, oh my gosh thing in there yeah so I popped in there a few different times so wow um, I just wanted to introduce yourself introduce myself and let you guys know that I am here to listen thank you Denise oh, we're a big fan of your uh, your cousin oh, oh yes absolutely awesome. yeah always Franklin yeah wow. <laughs> oh nice so I just yeah. I'm just here to kind of listen in and just after this I'm gonna leave my name like my information in the chat. And I'm going to okay. pop up here and actually introduce myself as the liaison and not, you know, just the neighborhood kid. So great. Cool, cool. great. great. Um, no, thank you. Thank I want to be able to assist you guys anywhere that we can, you know. Thank Wonderful. you so much. For sure. Big Mike never told us that. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. We're going to wait uh, a minute or two more and allow more folks to arrive. Welcome and thank you. All right, I think we could start. Okay, great. Okay. Welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us tonight um, at our uh, community gathering um, by Humphrey Street Studios. I am Christina Tedesco. I have been a Humphrey Street Studio tenant since 2004, and I'm a scenic designer in Boston. I also work in film um, for the films that come into town. Um, and we are, we, we are gathered to, um, to talk to you all about, well, us being the steering committee of Humphrey Street Studios. Um, we want to let Upham's Corner and the creative and cultural community know what's happening um, with the sale of our property, which is 11 to 13 Humphrey Street. Um, and you're going to hear from a number of committee members, steering committee members, as well as our proposed um, development partner. Uh, and there will be time for questions. So we want to acknowledge a few people who are here tonight. Um, thank you. Uh, I see Joelle. Um, thank you for coming, Fairmont Innovation Lab and Dorchester Art Project and the City of Boston. Thank you, Emma. 
Thank you, Denise. Um, and thank you, Patricia. It's great to see you all. And um, Sheila Dillon, Chief of Housing. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Josh to give you the, the, the long story that we're going to make very interesting. <laughs> I, I will try and not make it that long a story. I'll try and keep it uh, pretty uh, brief. Um, I just wanted to add my welcome to everyone. Um, and thank you for coming on this hot uh, night when you've all done millions of Zooms in the last year. We really appreciate people being here and, and, and hearing what's been going on here. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the, very briefly about the history and a little bit about just who we are. Um, so Humphrey Street was started in uh, 2002 by two artists, uh, Joe Wheelwright and Neil Wadette. Um, and as Christina said, it's at 11 to 13 Humphrey Street on the site of the former Dallow's um, uh, uh, cleaning, dry cleaning facility. Um, at any given time, there are 40 to 45 working artists um, and small creative businesses that are housed here. Um, some have been here since the very beginning, uh, like Christina, and some have just come within the last few months. Um, uh, we're a, a pretty diverse group of folks in terms of, of the different crafts. Um, we have sculptors, metalsmiths, painters, scenic designers, furniture makers, photographers, graphic designers, fabricators, ceramicists, many, many, many more. Um, we are a diverse group of people. We are all races. We are all ages. Uh, many of us live nearby. Um, I live 10 minutes away on my bike. Um, uh, a lot of the artists here show in museums, a lot teach um, at various schools, local schools and uh, universities. Um, and many work collaboratively with different groups within the city. Um, uh, Unfortunately, in the last five years, both of the original owners, Neil and Joe, passed away. Um, and their widows and the two other partners who own the property have decided to put the, uh, the, the property up for sale. Um, and that's sort of where we stepped in, um, particularly in the last year and a half. Uh, the Josh, you're muted. How did that happen? Was I muted that whole time? No. Oh. Okay, good. Um, I didn't touch my computer. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, as I said, the, the two uh, original founders had passed away and put the property up for sale. Um, and we've been working for the last year and a half uh, to try and find a way to preserve this um, uh, as affordable workspaces. Um, and we've been looking for partners uh, that will keep the artists and small businesses working in the city. Uh, I mean, so many of uh, these types of buildings have disappeared from the city and, and are gone forever. And the, the way, the idea of making one of these from scratch is uh, almost impossible at this point. So we're trying to preserve something that a lot of effort, time, money, sweat has gone into. Um, uh, so we've, what have we done? We've launched a formal tenants association um, and we got a verbal agreement from the owners um, to come up with a viable solution. Uh, and he, they gave us until um, April, May of this year. Um, and we, we did a lot of work with the city, with other folks. And we, we finally found a solution that's artist friendly um, with the developers at New Atlantic and Place Taylor, who you'll, I'll introduce you to in a little bit. Um, so what have we done in all that time? Uh, as I said, we've made contacts and connections with as many folks as we can, with the city, with the Office of Economic Development, Arts and Culture, uh, Department of Neighborhood Development, um, Landmarks Commission, uh, BPDA, um, as well as people in Upham's Corner Main Street, DSNI, Dorchester EDC, Fairmont Cultural Corridor, Fairmont Innovation Lab, um, Dorchester Art Project, and the list, list goes on and on, uh, including meeting with as many city councilors, um, state reps, Liz Miranda has been a huge, huge help. Um, uh, and now many of the mayoral candidates. So um, uh, we, we appreciate everyone, the connections that we've made um, uh, to help us find a way to, to support what we wanna do here. And what we wanna do is create a, a artist-led nonprofit for this building 
at the same time as develop the rear lot, which right now is a vacant lot, as affordable housing for the community. Um, and we see this as a win-win proposition for everyone. Um, so in April, we finally put together, we put our formal um, uh, uh, competitive offer we submitted to the owners um, in the time limit that they gave us. Uh, as soon as we submitted that, they signed an offer with someone else um, without talking to us, without any negotiation. Um, since then, uh, we've asked to speak with the owners, uh, with the new potential buyer, um, and we've had no communication back from them. Um, uh, they don't want to meet with us. Um, uh, so what we've done in response is started a, a campaign we're calling Art Works Here, Art Stays Here, um, to raise awareness for our situation. We've also uh, uh, started a petition, which the link will be in the chat, if we'd love all of you to sign to help support us, so that places like this don't disappear from the city. Uh, and we think we've come up with a really good solution to, to keep this place affordable in perpetuity, at the same time do some real good in the city by making affordable housing in, in the rear lot. Um, and we would love your, your support. Um, uh, we did a, a quick video that just um, explains a little bit more about who we are by JPix, one of the artists in our studios. Um, and uh, what we'd like to do is get the owner to reconsider the offer and come back to the table uh, and hopefully eventually sign an offer with this development team um, so that this place will be preserved. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the video. Thank okay. You. This is like a really unique kind of space in the, in the neighborhood in Boston. I've, it, I've never seen a place quite like this. And this is like one of those places that really helps people collaborate, innovate, create. Create our space and make our space not just for the artists who rent here, but also for anybody who wants to learn a new skill or just be around artists for a day. We're a group of 40 artists in Upham's Corner at Humphrey Street Studios. We've been here since 2002. We're asking you to support our plan where the studio buildings become an artist-run nonprofit and the vacant lot behind our building becomes affordable housing for Upham's Corner. It's a win for over 40 Boston working artists. It's a win for Upham's Corner and it's a win for development without displacement. Sign our online petition at HumphreyStreetStudio.com. So I think natural that all of us have, you know, we have the power to create, power to feel, um, create, express ourselves. Yay, JPEX. Yay, JPEX. Thank you, Jay. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, definitely about joining in on that campaign and becoming a better community. At some point, we've all fantasized about a life of stability, a life of comfort, a life that's stress-free, worry-free. But what if we pushed ourselves more oh. to step out of our comfort zone? Christina, you gotta... Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm um, trying. This CEO is really Fair bad. with us. Sorry. Uh, oh, please mute, or at least mute yourself. I'm trying. Okay. Franklin, is it your section now? Hello, everybody. It's really good to see familiar faces and not so familiar faces. I love that part. Uh, my name is Franklin Marble. I'm a graphic artist. I mostly paint hearts. And I also own Scienta Studio. We make signs. And, and I'm going to read this part because I don't want to miss any of it. So, the reason that I joined the steering committee is to help the fellow artists to preserve our property as affordable artists workspace in Boston. Part of our artworks here, our stay here campaign is for Humphrey Street Studios to connect more throughout Open's Corner and throughout Dorchester and Boston art community. That's why we host the Our Heart Visual Exhibition over the past two months. At Humphrey Street Studio, 
we reach out we reach out to the Fermo Innovation Lab, Dorchester Art Project, uh, artist community at large to invite folks to submit their art, their artwork. The result was a truly diverse exhibition filled with photography, painting, and sculpture, mixed media by nearly 40 artists. A very rich exhibition, and we were very happy with that. We host two receptions, a lot of folks came out not only to see the exhibition, but to tour our space, to meet artists making up the creative community that is being here for two decades. Not only we did get to gather safely over the past week, but our exhibition has been invited to show at JP Leaks at South Bay, which is awesome. This wall that you see behind me are the walls that we were full of art. We just closed the exhibition and now we are gonna move it to JP, JP Leaks and South Bay, which is awesome. And we're gonna keep exposing our artists. And this is just the beginning of what we, uh, Humphrey's Studio wants to move forward. We will host another exhibition over the summer. We will host neighborhood, potluck, barbecue, and free workshops events for our open corner neighborhood. We have planned to collaborate with fellow artists, organizations, and share the love for art and creativity. And also, this is something that I'm being, the major reason that I joined the, the, the student committee is because I, for the past years, I mean, I would say more than 10 years, I've been working on, 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 cre on creating and sharing and collaborating, and, and it's, been, it's been great. And we believe in what we're doing and we need to preserve the space so we can keep collaborating and there is more to do so this is just the beginning we wanna what we want is to we just don't want just a space for artists we want to evolve we want to do more so we want to connect more create spaces for meeting uh, rooms for the community there is a lot of the, at some point we want to share our vision and all the things that we wanted to do. But, we, but before we get there, we need to secure the space so we can create and move forward together. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin. Uh, everybody who worked on the, uh, the Our Heart exhibit, it was amazing. And just being together with people as opposed to being on Zoom and being outside and seeing the work and having people from all over Dorchester bring their work and show it was, was incredible. Um, and particular thanks to the people that really worked on it. Franklin, obviously you and Christina and Kat and JPix and Nora and, uh, and again, everyone else who, who helped with it. It was really a, a special event um, uh, and I think was a, a, a much needed uh, thing in this really complicated, horrible year. Um, uh, next, quickly, I just want to introduce our development partners. Um, as I mentioned, um, Bill Hardy is from New Atlantic, um, and we've been working with Bill with our plan for development without displacement for over a year now. Um, he, in partnership with Evan Smith from Place Taylor, from Place Taylor, have a plan that is both artist friendly um, and serves the the wider community, particularly up from Scorner, uh, with affordable housing. So, with that, I am going to turn it over to Bill. Thanks, Josh. Um, I'm Bill Madsen Hardy. I'm the co-owner of New Atlantic Development. Brian Goldson from New Atlantic, my, my partner, is also on with us. Um, New Atlantic is uh, an affordable housing development company. We've been working in Boston for over 25 years. Um, and we pretty much just do affordable housing. We have some uh, specializations within affordable housing. Um, and one of those is, is artist housing. Um, we've also done some uh, commercial uh, artist development as well. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been brought in to this exact situation a few times uh, where uh, our artists are um, about to be uh, kicked out of their spaces. And, um, you know, we've probably looked at five or six or seven of these over the last 20 years. And we've been able to save a lot of those 
resources. Um, and it's, it's not easy and it takes a real collaborative effort from the artists themselves, uh, support from the community. And uh, you know, most of our success is, is really due to the commitment of, of people at the city, people like Sheila Dillon, who's here, um, and Department of Neighborhood Development, and going back to Mayor Menino, he was a big supporter uh, of artist development. Um, and, you know, we, we have had some success stories in uh, Jamaica Plain, the Brookside artist community there. Uh, the Walter Baker Lofts building uh, in Dorchester was, was up for sale, and uh, we, we purchased it and turned it over to the artist, the Midway, uh, Midway Studios in Fort Point was put on the market and we helped the, the artists, you know, create a nonprofit, purchase the building and uh, hold, hold the building in their control and kept it uh, affordable in perpetuity. So that, that's, that's the goal here. Our number one goal is preserving the artist studios um, it, there's been some mention about developing affordable housing on the back of the site. Um, you know, that's, that's something we're, we're looking to do. We don't, we don't have a lot of detail to bring on that aspect uh, right now. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. What we're trying to do is, is secure the property and that's, that's where our focus is. Um, New Atlantic is, is partnering with with Place Taylor, uh, Evan Smith is here from Place Taylor. Um, Place Taylor is also a developer um, that has been working uh, most mostly in this community in Roxbury, Dorchester area. Uh, they are innovators in sustainable development. They also design and build, so uh, they're a great partner. Um, they, they were, they've been doing passive house development before anyone even knew what passive house development was. So that, that's uh, another critical piece to, to anything that we do. Um, you know, our, as I said, our, our, goal, our goal right now is to secure the property. Uh, Evan uh, and, and, and Brian and I have agreed that if we can get our, if we, if we can get back to the table with, with the seller, we're willing to purchase the property with with cash, and and then deal with, you know, financing it and getting subsidy for the affordable housing and whatever other resources we can get uh, to the artist studios later. Um, we we don't want to condition condition the sale on 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 those financing contingencies. So we we just want to purchase the property. So uh, we're excited to be. Uh, working with this group, I think you can you can uh, tell by hearing from them that that they're pretty passionate about what they do, and uh, we're we're very happy to be working with them and supporting the effort. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. Um, so we'd like to open up uh, the floor to some questions. Um, but we are, we're really, you know, we've, we've shared a little bit of our plan and we're really asking um, for the community support. Um, and, and, you know, one of the, the ways you can do that is by signing our <clears throat> online petition, supporting the plan. And um, if you wanna do more, you can share uh, the petition with your social networks, which we'd really appreciate. And we're hoping um, we can actually make enough noise as Bill said to bring to bring the, the sellers, the landlord back to the table um, by the end of June. Um, and as you also heard, they have not responded to us. So we are trying to create a, a presence so they have to respond to us. Um, and specifically, um, we'd like to have uh, more community meetings specifically about development um, and, and um, some programming ideas that we have for the summer. And that's if our campaign is effective and if our offer gets accepted. So, so we, we've got a lot of work to do still. Um, and if you have a question, um, you can raise your hand. Uh, you can do the raise hand function or, or flag me in the chat. Um, 
Please keep on mute though, um, unless it's your turn to ask a question. And Amy Bennett, who's on here, will, uh, will moderate the questions. Um, okay, what is the status of the other offer? Um, Josh, do you wanna, do you wanna take this? Um, yeah, so they have signed a, a, an offer sheet with, the, um, with another buyer. Um, we don't know a ton about the other buyer except his name. Um, and we have reached out to him uh, numerous times by email, by certified letter, um, just saying we wanted to talk um, and to know what their plans are. Um, and they have, we have heard crickets from them. Um, uh, we have tried to do that through the, uh, um, through the realtor and uh, the realtor has gotten, uh, we have gotten no response from the realtor about that as well too. Um, we have also tried to meet with the owners um, and we all, many of the owners spent many years here, including having their own studio spaces and they've all uh, turned it over to their head negotiator or mouthpiece, um, who is a real estate lawyer, who is one of the owners. And um, they have said that he's the only one that can talk for them. So we've been reaching out to all of them and just not getting any response. Um, so they have this signed offer. They haven't got to a purchase and sale. The purchase and sale we understand is uh, the deadline for that is to be signed in the beginning of July. I think July 5th, July 5th. is what we've told by the, the realtor, although he said, I think it's July 5th. So we've not getting, gotten any actual concrete data from them. Does anyone else have questions? Can, can I just add, add to what Josh said? Um, you know, so what, what hasn't what hasn't been said is that you know this this other buyer his his intentions are not known because he hasn't met with us or the or the artists. Um, but based on uh, what we do know of him and his experience, he seems to purchase property and 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 sit on it. Um, and so I think there are really only two options. One is he's, he's a speculator and he's buying the building and is gonna look to, look to sell it um, you know, to, to the highest bidder at some point in the future. Um, and secondly, just given, given the site uh, and, and, and the costs that are associated with redeveloping that site, there's there's um, almost no ch no chance that what's redeveloped on that site is is anything other than market housing. Um, you know it, there could you know if if the studios were were um, studio buildings were were knocked down you know we we could build a nice big affordable housing project there but that's not what we want we want to save the existing building so. You know the 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 only you know economical solution for you know a for-profit developer is is really knocking down those buildings and, and and building new condominiums. So so that's sort of the alternative that we're sort of working against. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Um, there's a couple. Uh, I just put a question in the chat. Yes. Oh, with landmarks. Josh, uh, do you, do you want to tackle that? Uh, sure. Um, what I didn't see the question, but I'll. What work have you done with landmarks? Uh, we've been in touch with the Landmarks Commission. Um, we've, all, we've also talked with a number of. Um, historic uh, Boston. Historic Boston. Uh, what's the other one? Artists um, or historic? Architectural Heritage Found. No, uh, Architectural Heritage Foundation. As well as uh, the Dorchester Historical Society, which has a lot of information on the buildings. Um, uh, I mean, the buildings are significant. Um, uh, they are uh, uh, late 19th century, early 20th century industrial buildings that have a lot of history. Um, uh, 
So we, we have been working with them. I mean, that is one of the options, trying to get the building um, designated as a landmark so that they can't tear it down. Um, and that's something where we're working, we're working towards. Um, and also, if we do secure the property with, with Bill and Evan, um, we would be looking to preserve the building and um, hopefully that could help with some of the funding for the project. Right, as someone mentioned in, in, in the chat, um, we, we would be looking for uh, CPA funds um, uh, you know, under the umbrella of, of preservation. So we need to go through that process with landmarks and I have, I have uh, a draft of the application and have been in communication uh, with, with landmarks already. Is there a way, I, I felt like I didn't get my question fully answered uh, about who the developer is, or where are they from? Uh, you said they had a history of sitting on buildings, so they're speculators. Uh, is, you know, do you have anything more? Are they from out of town? Um, Josh, you're um, on mute. They, they are uh, uh, the, the, the person who's perch, who's signed the offer to perch is someone, Kendall Properties, I believe their company. He has a large house out in Weston. We, all we know about him is he was part of a large uh, real est, national real estate company and that he now um, has gone off and started this company. When we search his name, we get various um, hits uh, saying, showing various other industrial properties he's owned or renting, uh, but there's not a lot of um, detail uh, on, on, on him or his properties. Um, so it's a little hard. We, we know he was involved in a lawsuit in Chinatown over a, a, a work um, share workspace, work share space. Um, uh, but other than that, we have not been able to find details on what he is. And, and he's had no contact with us. We, the only thing we heard is, well, maybe I, he wouldn't do anything for a couple of years. But that wasn't much guaranteed uh -huh. to us. Um, but we also asked through the realtor if we if he if the new buyer would be open to a deed restriction, and the realtor said no. Right. And who is the realtor? John Kremen. At Denenberg Realty. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bill, can you take the PNS question? If the PNS goes through, then what happens? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, if the PNS, yeah, is it if whose PNS goes through? Yeah, whose PNS? If oh, the current, the current, oh. my Laos. Well, then, it, yeah, if if uh, if my Lao, the current the current buyer, uh, elects to proceed with with the purchase, um, he's going to buy the building, and we don't, you know, we we don't know what exactly what's going to happen is. As, as I said, it, it, he seems to own property. I don't know that, that he develops property. He might be buying property that he thinks is gonna appreciate in value and can sell off in a few years. That might be his motivation or he might be looking to develop. We, 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 we don't know, but there's really not a lot of recourse that we have uh, in this situation or the city had. I mean, it's a, it's a private land sale. so. There's there's only uh, there's only so much that we can do. We we have we we made we submitted another offer um, once we heard that they had submitted an offer or that they had accepted an offer from that guy, and you know we we took out all of our contingencies and upped our offer, and we actually sort of found out. Um, I don't think we were supposed to find this out, but we found out that our revised offer is actually higher and better than the current buyers. So, um, you know, we think, we think we're in a good place. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're just kind of hoping that this, that this buyer walks away. Uh, and I should also say, um, uh, Ted from BPDA did reach out to the buyer and they did have a meeting. Um, and during that conversation, uh, BPDA asked the buyer what their plans were and they didn't really have an answer. That doesn't mean they don't have one, but they didn't share one with BPDA. 
except that they said they thought they could build 60 units here uh, at one point in that conversation, I believe. Right, and the zoning, like for the back parcel, the zoning would allow two, three family yeah. homes. So, you know, uh, he's not going to make his money back building two, three family homes. Yeah. Are there other questions? So I also um, want to introduce myself. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Bennett. Um, I've been a uh, volunteer helper with the Humphrey Street Artists for um, over a year. I live in Dorchester. Um, I'm an arts administrator and marketer. Um, and I you know, just wanted to say thank you to everyone who is here for taking the time. And thank you if you've signed the petition. If you haven't, please do. Um, if you have other questions, you can go on our website, um, humphreystreetstudio.com. There's all ways to contact us. There's, a, there's been a good amount of media coverage in the Globe and BUR, Dorchester Reporter. Um, all that's on our website uh, and our social media. And um, it would just be, you know, I just want to share that this group of people has worked really, really hard over the past year and a half. And um, for those who don't know, uh, over the past handful of years, not just in Boston, but across the city, I mean, across the country, artists' workspaces, you know, have just been, you know, literally mowed down. Uh, gentrification is a big theme we all know about, you know, um, all kinds of displacement of all kinds of people. And this really is, it, it was until April and this buyer and this offer, this situation was really teed up to be a model for how to do development without displacement. And we've been working with uh, Cara Elliott Ortega at the city for over a year, um, you know, basically week after week after week and uh, building a campaign and finding the right developers and, you know, finding support from the city and reaching out to the neighborhood and organizing our tenants into an association and really getting media coverage, you know, doing almost every single thing right. And then to have learned in April as we were ready <laughs> to uh, make the offer and you know go on to the next step, we inadvertently learned through the realtor that another offer had been accepted. And we, we, we were and are heartbroken. Um, you know, it would be different if we didn't have a plan and didn't do the work. It would be different if the artists didn't want to organize and do the work. It would be different if we didn't have development partners who weren't artist friendly. Uh, it would be different if we didn't have support from the city. But, you know, the real, the real, you know, kind of gut wrenching thing here is that if if this project, which was teed up to work, doesn't work, you know, what kind of hope is there? for future, you know, artist studios are just gonna, you know, keep, it, it's it's really unfathomable. And um, so we're hoping that we'll get some more press. We're hoping some uh, folks from the city might reach out, you know, to the owners or the buyers. We're hoping to get our petition up to a thousand people and to really show um, the buyer that there's a plan here. There's artists at work here. There's you know, and that we care even about, I don't know if people have heard this term place keeping, not place making, everyone's been hearing about that for years, but place keeping and really honoring a lot of these artists have been here at one decade or two. Like that's, we want to keep this place as artist studios. We want to keep, you know, trying to reach out with the neighborhood and the community and do workshops and barbecues and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and we also truly want to, honor the legacy of the of the founding owners. Um, and it would just be a huge shame if after all this work and after all the support it, that it didn't work out. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. Well said, Amy. Yeah. Um, uh, just really quickly that, yeah, sorry. Shad has a uh, question. I read in the BU article, the BUR article that the landlord would not be used with the land would not be usable for homes because the soil is polluted. Wouldn't that keep the space from being developed for residential use? Bill. <laughs> um, sure. Um, yes, there, there are uh, environmental issues with, with the property. 
uh, the environmental issues are mostly uh, on the portion of land where the existing buildings are and not so much on the vacant land that we were talking about, you know, developing some affordable housing on. Um, it's kind of uphill and up, up gradient in, in that area. Uh, but that goes to what, what I said about um, re redeveloping the, the studio's site would be very expensive. Um, you know, re residential can be built there, but it, it would require fully remediating, uh, you know, what, what's in the soil. So knocking down the buildings and then, you know, taking out huge, huge amounts of soil uh, and you know, shipping them to lined landfills. Um, that that's that's a pretty uh, expensive uh, thing to do. And you know, again, the only way to really make make that work is you know to have pretty pretty dense you know market rate housing um, as as the project that that can afford to to pay those costs. You know, with the existing building, um, there are there, there there are lots of mitigation uh, responses that that we will undertake uh, when when we buy the building in terms of uh, you know see, sealing all of the slabs um, and making sure there's no vapor vapor intrusion anywhere. And you know we we are we're, we're confident that we we can make uh, the buildings as they are uh, healthy and and safety and healthy and safe uh, for the people working there. Yes, Sheila. Yeah, I'm I'm you know I'm just strategizing about the current buyer and um, you know probably if. If history is any, or if history is a predictor of the future, they're probably banking on the artists scattering, right? Getting mm -hmm. discouraged and leaving, and getting relief to do their, uh, or either do the development themselves or sell the property. And it, and I think it's going to be really important for um, the artists to remain one, you know, as, as much as they can for the, you know, everybody's got an individual situation, but. Two, for the Dorchester community, and it's really nice to see so many folks that I know from this community that really care about this community, uh, state very clearly that they're not gonna support zoning relief and you're not gonna support you know, approvals for uh, development on, the, on that land. They, they've gotta know, I think, and I'm, maybe, I, maybe I'm being inappropriate, but I, if, if the Dorchester community, the larger community feels that um, what what they think is going to happen is going to happen. They're probably right. But two, if you let the buyer know, this you are not you're going to build two triple deckers in that back parcel. It really is going to deflate the value. I mean, you, you've got to get strategic about getting this buyer out of the way. And so, anyway, just just I'm trying to think through. You know, landmarking I think is a good thing if you start that process. But it's we got a short window here to kind of let the buyer know that there's going to be an issue. This, this may not be a good investment. So I think that's the, that's the critical actions in the next three, four weeks. Well, and that's really, thank you, Sheila. That's really the rub because the buyer will not meet with us or talk with us or email with us or anything. And I mean, by design, obviously. Um, as Josh mentioned, we sent certified mail. We've sent emails to him. We've sent, um, you know, we've asked repeatedly, we've, um, aside from like going to his house, which we think is a little inappropriate, um, I'm not really sure how else yeah. to communicate like, with him. Maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, you know, um, you've got a lot of good, strong neighborhood associations there. You've got DNI there, you've got, you know, so I think now is the time for them all to write letters and say, just, okay. just, just be forewarned. Okay. We're not, we're not going to support. And, um, you know, I can't speak for the Zoning Board of Appeals, nor can I speak for the BPDA, but I think if the community feels strongly that development shouldn't happen and what you're going to support and what you're not going to support, make it known now. Okay. Maybe we could um, do an op-ed 
where the community members uh, sign on to that as well. That'd be a good thing. I just, you know, I don't know what they print these days. It's really hard yeah. to get good, you know, meaningful stories written, but, but anyways, I mean, you we, guys, could, we could, we could try. Yeah. Okay. But I think even letters saying, you know, dear prospective buyer. I think letters would be great. I think, I mean, we have the petition, the petition will, we keep sending to them, but I think letters from any organizations that would be willing to, to, to sign on. I mean, we could even write a sort of form basic, what we are thinking, uh, uh, but obviously people that would have to come from them. But I think if there's other folks on this call that are willing to do that, willing to write a letter or put their organization um, on it, that would be really helpful. And we would really appreciate that. Send us the information about yeah. the developer's name and address. And I, on behalf of Eastman Elder, right down, I live right down the street, um, will be happy to get the support of my neighbors to um, sign a letter. Can you put your contact information uh, or message us so we have that? Um, we, we, we have, have it. Joan. We have it. Have it. Yeah. Okay, thank, yeah. you. thank you, Joan. Thank yeah. you. I finally I, have your correct email address. <laughs> yes. Um, Can, um, there was a point here about the um, civic associations. Um, mm -hmm. Not really sure, aside from Jones, which is, is Jones uses the elder. Is that right? It's Eastman Elder. Eastman Elder. There's, there's McCormick. There's Columbia Seven Hill. I think they should be supporting this. Um, there are friends from Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative. Uh, I could go on and on, but um, Jones Hill Association. I know Kit Bins was at your event. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they would be. Uh, willing to sign a letter. Um, Upham's West Side, on the other side of Dudley Street. Uh, Joan, would it be okay if uh, Christina or I contact you directly about those uh, those folks? Yeah, sure. Great, because I think we're I think we don't know about yeah. some of them. Yeah, and and um, thank you, Minnie from DS and I, who is here. I just saw. So we'll be we'll be getting in touch with you as well. Great. Christina, I had wrote you in the chat. Can you also send me the information? It's Denise from the city yes. for the information for the buyer as well. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, so we'll thank you everyone. We'll follow up with every, that's why we um did the registration through Eventbrite so that we could follow up with folks. So we can send an email tomorrow morning with um you know, a dummy letter and uh, email addresses or snail mail addresses for the buyer, et cetera. And um, all that help is super appreciated. Awesome. Um, Does anyone else from our steering committee, HSS or any HSS artists have anything to share? Does anyone else from the meeting or the community have anything they'd like to share? Well, I'm very impressed that we could keep this meeting to under an hour. I think uh, we should give ourselves a wow. hand. <laughs> yes. Thank yes. you all for, for coming. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank if you any, for- If anything comes up after the meeting, if you just go to the website, um, there's ways to contact us through there. Um, or you also probably got an email from me with the Zoom link at some point today. You can reach back out that way too. And we, we really appreciate everybody coming and and just offering support or questions or anything or just feeling part of a larger community is uh, is really important. And it's been one of the incredible things about this whole year is just getting to know different people in different aspects of the of the city and the community and the arts community has been really powerful. Now, hopefully we can put it put it to work. Thank you. Hopefully, for hopefully the next time we have a community Zoom meeting like this, it will be to say our offer was accepted. We're working with Bill and Evan. We're going to develop this into some affordable housing and uh, and that we're going to have a new community room place where uh, the neighborhood can use the space and we can have lectures and workshops and meetings and et cetera. And that's not going to be a Zoom. That's going to be a barbecue in the backyard. So forget yeah. about Zoom business. So. <laughs> yeah. And um, you can get to our petition on our website. Um, 
So please sign our, our petition and send it to your networks. Um, yeah, please guys, sign our online petition. Artworks here, art stays here, spread the word and uh, let's join in on something creative um, for all of us to enjoy later. So thank you again for everyone who attended today and tonight. Thank you. Yay, thanks. Thank you everybody. Thank